Yo, yo, it's BQ. Welcome back to the channel. I don't typically like doing multiple uploads in a day, but I kind of have no choice, right? There was uh, releases in the last couple of days that we got to talk about. And, you know, could they end up in Impact Wrestling? I think a lot of people would like to see a lot of these people show up. Are they realistic? I don't know. Are they unrealistic? I don't know. I guess we'll see. There's probably people in the company right now that we never expected uh, we would see in the past. So we're going to talk about them. Um, I want to, the first name I want to bring up though, was Eva Lee's being released yesterday from AEW. This is one of my favorite wrestlers. I'm very disappointed about that because I enjoyed her work with Diamante over there. I really wanted to see him cross over to Impact, take on Fire and Flava. And maybe they were, maybe that was the plan. And that's why they're just dragging their feet in the knockouts tag team division right now. Who knows, but it's very possible, right? Um, but you know, there's always been the rumors about questionable, um, attitude, questionable attitude with Ivalice. With what, everything that happened with Tessa Blanchard, I don't think Impact would go that route again. We don't know that she really has these issues, but when the rumors like circulate, you know, that they circulate about Tessa Blanchard too, and what happened ultimately in the end, look how that panned out. I tell my kids, I would never say a bad thing about Ivalice because again, that's one of my favorite wrestlers, but I tell my kids when something, uh, when history repeats itself, and, and I tell them this when they look to blame other people for their actions and things like that. When history repeats itself, it has now become a, a habit. It is no longer a coincidence. It's a habit. So what's the common denominator when that happens? That's what you got to look at. And then, you know, it gets you a little bit closer to the truth. Again, we don't know. I'm not going to speak on that situation. But because there are questionable uh, characteristics and uh, uh, questionable attitude, with Eva Lease, I don't think Impact would bring her on. Let's talk about the WWE releases here. What they call it, Black Monday, but what's today? Thursday, Black Thursday. So a uh, round of release always happens. Releases that happen after uh, WrestleMania to make up for some of the guys that they and girls that they brought in over the year. So let's talk uh, Let's talk the women first because, you know, we just spoke about Eva Lee. So let's go ahead and talk about the women. So uh, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce are both released. I think uh, Billy Kay is one of the more realistic targets for impact on this list, uh, this list of releases. I think she's, she's, um, you know, Pey Peyton Royce has a lot more star power to her, in my opinion. I don't know a whole lot about their Iconics work, but I did watch early work in NXT before I stopped watching their product. And I've seen some YouTube clips of backstage segments, interviews, a little bit of wrestling over the years. So I, I get a good, a good feel for them. Um, but Peyton Royce... I think she's she's got a great look, a lot of star power. I think it's natural for her to want to go to AEW with her husband, and I think that's what ultimately happens. Billy Kay, I, I feel that if they didn't want to do like a, a reunion between the two, bring them as a team together, I think she makes a lot of sense for Impact. I think she's more realistic for them. I don't think that someone AEW is like, Ooh, we need to get our hands on this girl. Uh, Ring of Honor would have no interest in her. I know they're rebuilding their women dis women's division. I don't see them having any interest in that, though. And I don't see, um, you know, a smaller company like NWA or MLW having interest in her either. I think, uh, you know, she definitely would make a lot of sense for uh, Impact. Uh, I think she would make a lot of sense as a tag team partner for Tennille Dashwood to do the influencer thing that we've been, you know, talking about possibly happening. I always, sell I always say Danielle Monet who was uh, Summer Rae would have been the perfect tag team partner for Tennille. But, you know, if you had to have a, I don't say the close second, probably a distant second, uh, I think she could work. And she's Australian, right? Just like Tennille. So it would it would work. Um, what's some other girls? Um, uh, Mickey James was released. And if you think about Nick, Nick Aldis, he has a very, he, he, has a, he has a grudge with TNA, it seems. Uh, and I say TNA because it, Impact is a completely different company, different people involved. <laughs> I mean, I think the only consi the only uh, consistent uh, consistent from uh, those days is Josh Matthews. You know what I'm saying? So unless he's got beef with Josh Matthews, I don't really understand um, why he continues to have issues with uh, the company. But I don't think he would allow her to return, come back. Yeah, she's her own woman, but um, I don't think she's at a point in her career where she necessarily needs to wrestle full time. So the NWA would actually make a lot of sense for her. Uh, I would love to see her return to Impact. Impact loves to bring people back from the past, but uh, I don't think it's realistic. Uh, Chelsea Green, that's one that they, I, I think they really need to work hard on. Um, 
She left when she asked for her release when she was the knockouts champion. Now, I, I talked to Chelsea personally about this. Um, she left the company on good terms. And it was very important to her that she did leave on good terms. And, and if you guys remember, we were we were upset because of the way she left the company. But she continued to promote to the very last day. Uh, had positive things to say and was, you know, but when you listen to Chelsea, it, it, when, when she was with TNA and you listen to her interviews, like she was always wanted to go to NXT, always did. I mean, there was no, no doubt, you know, there was very little of her talking about impact, but Matt Cardone is there, Dion Perrazzo is there because they were, um, they're very close and I think they were a stable right in NXT and maybe Ellering was a third one. So, uh, it's probably a 50 50, I think, with her. I think there's an opportunity to bring her back. I think they should want to bring her back. Um, but would she want to be on a bigger stage? She left because she wanted to be on a bigger stage, not never got that opportunity. So would she do the AW thing? You know, they, they do need some gals. I think they have a lot of women. I think they have a better division than they get credit for, but they, they could use a couple girls that make sense. Um, and she makes sense for them. So I think that one's 50 50. And then, uh, I think there was one other girl, right? Mickey James, Chelsea Green, both the iconic girls, and um, Evil. Oh, so Evil. So it's five. AW. Okay, let's talk about the guys here real quick. Samoa Joe is the big name on this thing. Uh, if I know Impact Wrestling, they've already uploaded Samoa Joe clips to YouTube and full matches. It's match of the week. It just so happens to be match of the week, uh, classic moment of the week, classic moment of the day. It just so happens, just a, just a coincidence. But uh, there's probably a, a video right there, right now on, on YouTube, Samoa Joe, or at least by the time that I upload this or finish recording it even, there's going to be Samoa Joe on Impact's uh, social media and their YouTube. You know, I love their Twitter and YouTube. I just love them. So Samoa Joe, this is one that I think Impact's going to be all over. And they should be. Um, they they've they have wanted names from TNA's past, and they've been waiting for some of uh, wait of those contracts to expire. I don't think Samoa Joe would return though. Again, just like Chelsea Green, he kind of wanted to be on that bigger stage, and I don't know he got that opportunity that he wanted. So there's an alternative, you know. Um, he could throw people for a loop, and end up in Ring of Honor. Uh, but I don't know. Um, I, I don't think he would return. I think Impact, Impact will try very hard to bring him back, though. And I would say it's not impossible to see him return. I think it's unlikely, but it, it could happen. I think it could happen. Some of these other names, Tucker, um, I don't know much about him other than some YouTube clips. Doesn't appear to be a star. Uh, Wesley Blake is not a star. Uh, you know, as I stopped watching NXT... That kind of represented the uh, the time that I lost interest because I really liked the character work when it was like a very developmental company. And then him and uh, Buddy Murphy were tag team champions and it started getting like, okay, now they're just putting belts on on dudes, you know? Like they're just putting them on guys, Jags, just a guy. You know, no no character, no nothing. You know, and that's why I started getting very like bored and found it to be like a really vanilla promotion after that. So um, I, I don't think he has... Um, much to offer impact but let me put this before I, I, I go any further we talk a lot about here on the channel and then some of you in the comments we talk about a lot a lot about wanting to see fresh faces new up-and-comers um what i what do i always say that impact would rather remind you that aj styles used to wrestle for the company instead of finding the next aj styles that's how it comes off right um I have to be honest. I've said that I said this on a cool factor a week or two ago. I think they're just in the business of signing these uh, these released WWE guys because that's what history shows, right? When uh, history repeats itself, like I like I talked about, it's it's a habit. That's just what they do. That mindset hasn't changed. Um, I don't know that it ever will. The way that I see it is AEW can't sign everyone, but when they do want to sign someone, they want someone that was up here. Or that's down here that they can develop and turn into something. Impact's not really in that developmental game. They're, they got a couple dudes, Ace Austin, you know, a couple of guys that they've, you know, kind of, kind of built, essentially from the ground up. Uh, I mean, they had they had a gimmick when they showed up, but I think that is just where Impact lays its hat. We're gonna we're gonna take these guys from WWE that are looking for an opportunity, the guys that AEW wouldn't be like. I don't think AEW has interest in mid card. WWE guys, they signed Sean Spears, and that you know now they're doing something with him, but that didn't they didn't that didn't really work for a while, you know. 
so if you look at the guys like Heath, you look at Matt Cardona, you look at um, Brian Myers, who I think have all done really good work with Impact so far. That's that's where Impact attacks. That's that's where they're trying to get their guys. It just it's the proof is there. You know, the proof is it, it is obvious that develop you know finding those like hot young indie talents just isn't what they do. And if I were a hot young indie talent myself, I don't know that I would come over for a paper appearance deal when I can wrestle for a bigger audience on AEW Dark. You know what I'm saying? So I think this is just the the, the Blake Murphy's. Um, is that his name, or did I combine the name of the two? Buddy Murphy and Blake. Okay, Wesley Blake. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> Those dudes. Um, Steve Cutler. You know, that's Deanna Brazos' uh, guy. Uh, you know, Tucker. These are dudes impact that they're right there for the taking for impact. You know what I mean? I don't think there's competition. It also depends though. Um, do we, do they want to rebuild these guys? Because there's some dudes, there's the random EC three that you're just like, I'm going to sign this dude and just completely give them something new to work with. But for the most part, part impact, especially with the women, they really like to bring people over who already have some cut, something established. You know what I mean? It's not much of a, we're going to build you from the ground up type of place that, uh, you know, we see them develop over the years. Yeah. They might have, you know, freedom to change their gimmick throughout the years. But I mean, they usually like fairly established wrestlers, but guys like that, they're just dudes. You know what I mean? Um, there's no gimmick to them. There's no, what, what do you have to work with? You don't even have the, the name power to work with, with a lot of those guys. And you have to completely or rebuild them. It was like with Matt Cardona, everyone knew he was Matt Cardona. You know, he was Zack Ryder. Everyone knew he was Matt Cardona. Everyone knew Brian Myers, you know, Heath Miller. He's just using his name, Heath. Like, everyone knew that about them. So they had their own brand within a brand that they could work with. Dudes like that, you know, they're probably up Impact's alley to sign. But, you know, if, if you're not bringing in guys like the Ascension and stuff, I don't see why you would why you would bring dudes like that in. Bo Dallas was, when I watched WWE, one of my favorite acts. <laughs> I just was entertained by him. But if they didn't bring in uh, Henning's son, Kurt Henning's son, then I don't see why they would bring him in. Um, because that dude makes a lot more sense than Bo Dallas does. Um, it, it would I couldn't see it in a million years. And then uh, who else we got? Who else? I think there was one more. Kalisto. I know uh, Conan said they're going to be bringing in more Mexican wrestlers and all that, but I don't see Kalisto being a fit either because he's just like the other dudes where uh, you'd have you know he can't bring his name, so you kind of have to build him into something else. And you know, granted, maybe with the Luchadors it's a little easier because they don't not cutting so many promos and everything. Um, but he would, he would be fun for the X division. He would, uh, he would bring some star power, you know, depending on what his name and all that would be, you know, uh, when they, when Sankara was released, I was like, well, they're not, they're not going to bring him. Cause he, they, yeah, he's just a wrestler under a mask. You know what I mean? But, but even though Kalisto is too, I think like he's more popular, you know what I'm saying? He's not more popular than a Sankara character in Mexico, but, um, he, he's more popular as a luchador, but um, eh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's uh, would happen. Um, you know, we'll see. But Impact likes to kind of break out their, you know, their checkbooks for um, for dudes like this. You know, the, these mid card guys. And uh, I think they're going to take a swing at Samoa Joe. I don't think it's going to happen, but they're going to take a swing. So um, you guys, let me know who you think is realistic and who's who isn't realistic. If I had to say, okay, you know, gun to my head, they're going to bring these people in. I would say. Um, Billy K, and I would say um, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. That's what that's the one I think is the most realistic, um, right up their alley. And if they hey, if they wanted to do something to really rehabilitate rehabilitate that knockouts division, yo, uh, you bring in both those girls, and um, it would it would give a star power as a team to that division. I don't think that's what's gonna happen, but uh, that's all I've got to say about all that. I will talk to you guys soon. I am your boy BQ. I am out. Peace.